Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint a woman in a field of lavender. Um, we'll be showing you step by step how to do it all the way from start to finish. And uh, I've got my husband Mark with me today. Hey there, everybody. He's man of chat during the live show, so if you've got questions, you can ask those and we'll try to answer them while I'm painting. All right, let's get started. Okay, sorry for the delay for those watching us live. We had some technical issues this morning, or this afternoon, I guess. Um, but uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, <laughs> we'll, we'll get through this. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with my computer. I guess we'll, we'll need a new one very soon. <laughs> uh, anyhow, I've got my reference photo here. I went ahead and gridded it out just to make it easier to draw. Um, there's a grid drawing tool. If you just Google grid drawing tool, um, art grid, I think it's called artgrid.com maybe. Um, anyhow, this is where I, I did the grid uh, from the original photo. So you could use any photo photograph that you have and grid it out. Uh, just make sure that you get the proportions the same as your um, canvas. And so I just lightly chalked in my grid on my canvas. This is a nine by 12 inch canvas. So I made sure I did 12 squares so that I have one inch squares. Um, here and up this way and I went ahead and cropped off the side of it so that it matched and fit in that area. Um, so let me go over the brushes and the paints really quick. Sorry I'm a little <laughs> off my game today. Let's go with the brush. We've got uh, unbleached titanium, titanium white, quinacridone magenta, cadmium red medium, yellow oxide, cadmium yellow medium, uh, phthalo green, uh, yellow shade, ultramarine blue, Doxazine purple, burnt sienna, and burnt umber. Uh, and I may gray out the colors. This is a two part series. So the first one was the woman in the um, poppy field. And if you want to match it up to this, like color wise, we can gray out the sky a little bit so that it's not quite as bright blue. Um, so I'm going to do that just a little bit, I think, but if you want yours uh, brighter, you can just leave out the, um, I'll, I'll show you how to do that too. So if you're not doing both of them and you don't need them to kind of match up. So I'm going to need a large br flat brush for just the, some of the large background areas. This is a number 10 bright Princeton uh, 6100 series, and I've got a number one round from the Princeton series. 6100 and then I've got a couple of their angle brushes the quarter inch and three it's inch angle velvet touch line I've got the Will Willows blender for some of the um, greenery and things or the, the lavender flowers I've got a fan brush and a couple liners for some of the hair I think we'll probably want and then another stippler deerfoot stippler for some of the stippling so you really just uh, you could really kind of exchange all three of these brushes um, they each do kind of different things give a little bit different look but you could get away with if you just have one of them or even just a fan brush you could you could do that um, most of it with that all right set those aside and I'm going to show you how to draw it. Um, like I said, I, I gridded mine out just to make it easier. When you're doing figures and things like that, it's just easier to um, grid because you want to get your proportions just right. So if you notice here up in this upper corner, I just, this is my little box here. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, it's pretty light. I, I drew it in pretty faint. But um, you're just going to match up each little box area and try to draw what you're seeing in that box and then go to the next box and just kind of look at the distance between the spaces try to try to get it to match up about the same so her hair is her head is actually kind of um, sort of rounded up here and then goes kind of straight and then almost straight down here and then angles in pretty sharply right here and goes in down across. There's some that, that where is that? Right here. I erased so much of my boxes I can't really see where they're at. Then the shoulder is coming down from about halfway down the hair here and it's angling down and then across and then she's got real bony shoulders so it kind of comes up pretty sharply 
and around goes out just slightly and then down and then curves in at the elbow a little bit and then her uh, crease right here is pretty pretty thin angles in this way there's a little bit of a space between this part of the arm so it kind of comes down from that straight down right there and there's a curve along the back of her back of her dress her shoulder blades right in here I'm drawing it in darker than it'll be obviously the elbow is right above this little line right here on this if you're part of my patreon um, uh, members I just posted this photo with the grid on it um, yesterday so um, it's available there if you want to download it. It's got this. So the outside of her dress does this angle all the way down to the bottom of the canvas and it's this series of curved lines, wavy ruffled edge all the way down the canvas. Then this side, her hair comes in a little bit and back out. There's some kind of S curves that happen right here. A fold that happens in her hair, so it kind of comes in this way, and then it folds. This part kind of comes out over the top of the dress, but we're going to paint that dress in first before we put the hair in, so we just want to make sure we get that dress right. The top of the shoulder will be across from this one, and you're, it's kind of masked by the hair there, but we're going to go ahead and put it in. kind of comes down. Uh, let's go, it angles out a little bit, right at the elbow. And the elbow is right at the waistline, so you can know that you're doing it right there. There's the elbows right at her waist, where it's pinched in the most. And the forearm narrows, tapers down to the wrist. And then the hand, there's just a little bit of her hand showing, so it's kind of a triangle shape right here and then this dress is covering up part of it and really if you want the dress to go up all, all the way over her hand you can do that too if you don't want it to mess with the with the hand make it a little bit easier then there's another wavy line this one kind of just angles out this way like that all right then the horizon line is right about uh, mid-level on her head here. Goes across right at the second square down, really, on our drawing. And then there's a bush over here. I'm going to make it move it over a little bit. There's some clouds up in the sky. I'm not going to draw those in. We'll just paint them in. And then um, her field does not have really uh, significant lines in it. Uh, if you want to do that, we can kind of uh, fudge it and sort of just do some angled lines out this way. And one out this way. Like that. It's going to get much wider as it gets closer to us. And then... Very thin and wide, wide, wide. These will be about the same width out here. So you just kind of imagine what this is going to be. Our horizon line is somewhere up in here, or our focal point somewhere right up above her head. I guess probably eye, uh, eye line. across like this and have them all kind of pointing to that so these ones over here are going to be very narrow and there we go so there's your perspective on your fields totally leave that out if you don't want to we've got you know there's not really a whole lot going on here you can just 
as long as you make the these little bushes smaller than the ones uh, closest to us you can still get that distance perspective look all right let's get to painting here so I'm gonna grab my large brush and like I said I'll show you on the sky if you want to to have a brighter sky you could just do ultramarine blue and white uh, maybe even a little bit of phthalo blue um, that'll give you a really bright blue for the sky. If we want to gray it out a little bit, I'm just going to add a tiny touch of yellow, and that's what we did with the sky in the other one. I'm going to use a little bit of unbleached titanium. That will make a more gray blue sky. I'm going to make it a little bit brighter because I don't want it as gray as the other one, but I am going to gray it out just a little bit just so that it kind of seems like they go together a little bit better. And I'm just going to go all the way across here. Just try to work that paint down into the canvas. And then sort of smooth it out side to side. Get off any ridges or rough areas. As I get towards the horizon line, I'm going to get more white. Put that down first where I want it brightest. I'm just going to go over the top of that bush and put it back in later. And then blend it up into our sky. Add a little bit of water every now and then so that your paints stay moist. When you add your water, you don't want to add too much straight onto the canvas. You always want to kind of dip into your water. And then There we go. So dip into your water just the corner and then bring it to your palette. And if your brush, if it if it's kind of soggy, you can tap it on your paper towel just a little bit before you go to the canvas. That'll help you kind of manage the water on your brush. You want to keep it hydrated, but you also don't want to have super sloppy, um, soggy water happening on top of your uh, paint that's drying because it will lift off the paint that's drying. It'll cause drips and all kinds of issues. So you just kind of want to keep an eye out for that. So we got a question. Okay. They want to know how many runaway brides are there going to be? <laughs> I don't know if I can, I can keep finding flower pictures of runaway black brides. We might just keep on doing these. These are fun. Uh, I saw this picture shortly after I did the puppy one and I was like, oh, we got to do another one. <laughs> that was good. All right, so I took white paint. I still have these other colors on my brush, so it's not fully clean white, you know, on my brush, it's not fully clean. And I'm just kind of lightly skimming over the top of this paint while it's still wet. If it is dried, just let it dry completely. And then you can do this afterwards, um, even if your paint has dried a little bit. So I'm going to grab my Actually, I'm going to let that dry because I feel like I don't want to mess with it too much while it's still wet. And you can see I went over her hair. Don't worry about that. We can, we'll cover that all up later. If it bothers you, you can take a paper towel while it's wet and just kind of clean off a little bit of the darkest part just to kind of, so you don't have a hard edge on her, on her hairline there. All right, so let's paint in our lavender field. I'm gonna grab the purple, and I'm gonna add it to this color. I might even grab just a tiny bit of green. It'll kind of gray out our purple a little bit, deepen the color. That blue just kind of lightens it up just a little bit. And I am gonna use a little bit of the lighter color. It's a little bit more white here. Or even like the this this white it just has a little bit of of like yellow oxide in it the unbleached titanium so the yellow and the purple together will actually gray each other out too so it's not a bad idea to use for our lavender field so I'm gonna 
start at the horizon line and I'm going fairly dark with this at first we'll add highlights to it or we'll add yeah our highlights to it eventually but I'm gonna kind of tap with that corner of my brush the f the the, line, the horizon line is not perfectly clean, so I'm just kind of using the edge of my brush to sort of tap in, sort of in circular motion here. And then we'll go side to side, and I'm going to cover up all my good lines here. <laughs> if you want to keep those, you can kind of try to draw them in with your purple, your darker purple first, just so that you kind of have your lines mapped out. And then we can fill in our sections. There's a little bit right here. I'll try to get that in there. And I, I, if, if you want to, what you could do is you could draw out your girl on paper and paint in your lavender field and then trace on your girl on top of the lavender field and and then paint um, right on top of that purple area. Um, the bad thing about it is the white area you'll have to do several coats to cover you know to cover up your I'm getting some darker purple here for the crease area um, to cover up your the dress you know just to make it so you know vibrantly white but it could look pretty you know so or it could be a little bit easier I should say to do it that way so I'm gonna go ahead and kind of do a little bit lighter just in between here so that I can kind of keep my lines in my field a bit more distinct and I'm not doing them super I'm not gonna do them super strong if you want to you can put a really hard shadow in between and really bright highlights I'm just gonna kind of indicate that there's something happening there but I mean I'm not gonna be super detailed with the lines in our field because really our photograph doesn't have them anyway so need them so there we go keep them kind of indistinct let's do this side how's our internet doing this one is it having issues or are we good it's holding its own right now But uh, we did notice that there may be a color difference between our cameras here. What do you mean? When we show the side cam, it looks like the purple in the side cam uh -huh. is a little bit more purple than the palette cam. Mm. Especially on, on the stream. Oh, I see. I see what it's saying. Yeah, actually, See, this the, seems a little bit bluer. The side cam is more is is better. Is more true color. This one's not quite. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is blue. So that's something that we'll have to correct. Oh, great. <laughs> Things were going so well for so many well, shows. I know it's just it's about time. That's an old camera, and that's why I stopped using it because it was having trouble with that. It would it would do weird stuff like that. It was it was. The lighting was the main thing for me when I was using it before it would all of a sudden get really dark for some reason and I'd have to adjust it. So we have to ch we have to swap out the side cam and for the... that one. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, we we can do, do that. that. Yep, probably. Sorry about that everyone. Yeah, that's weird. Hmm. Yeah, no, we were we had such a good run there for a while. We aren't having any issues, and now you, I, it makes me remember how <laughs> how finicky live live streaming can be because yeah. we had a lot of issues when I first 
started doing live streaming like this all the time. And we had a good so run long. there. Yeah, we did. Hey, people got a question. If they want to increase this painting to a larger uh -huh. size, um, would they have to use a larger grid? Or how would they go about doing no, that? No, you just use the same kind of grid. You just use larger squares on your canvas. So, um, right. you know, okay, say... That's, that's what I meant. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you would just... You would just do, you know, maybe two inch squares or three inch squares instead of one inch. And you can always um, do, you know, more grids. So if you want, you know, it more detailed, you could do instead of 12, do 24. But you always want to have uh, whatever size canvas you're doing or what, yeah, whatever size canvas you're doing, um, do a multiple of that on your. If you're doing a 24 inch canvas, wide canvas, do either 24 squares or 12 squares. You know, something that's a multiple of, of that to make it easier for the math to work. So, and then just do the exact same number of squares on your canvas as you have on your grid. And that way you know that the squares match up. Does that make sense? Yeah, hopefully. It does. Okay, good. That's one of us making sense today. So like one big square maybe? Yeah, no, exactly. That'd be too much. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm going to grab a little bit of white on the tip of my uh, Deerfoot stippler. You could also use this brush if you wanted to. Uh, just do the same thing. We're just going to add a few little clouds in here. Kind of wispy. Make sure you don't have too much paint on your brush. If you do feel like there's too much paint going on, just wipe it off. And then you can kind of use the bottom edge of that to sort of Drag that paint out, soften up the bottom edge there so you get kind of some softer wispy clouds. This is not going to be like a cloud lesson, so we're just going to kind of do a few little ones and move on. I'm not, I want to have plenty of time to work on our girl. So. I've got lots of lessons that have clouds in them, so if you are interested in doing really realistic clouds, uh, I think one of the best ones that I did was actually the seascape with the beach chairs. I really took a lot of time on those clouds and talked about you know how to do them. So that would be a good one to don't don't necessarily do your chairs the way I did though, because you might not be able to sit on them. <laughs> They weren't exactly regulation chairs, I think. Yeah, OSHA didn't approve them. Somehow they went really wrong. So, good just thing, a warning. Good thing you don't design like baby strollers and things like that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, I'm going to make some of the darker blue that's in our sky. I'm going to add a little bit of that purple even to pull some of that color up into the sky. So a little bit of ultramarine blue, a little bit of this purple. And some of this unbleached titanium. There we go. Okay. Wipe most of that off. And I'm going to go underneath some of these clouds and just add a little bit of shadow. Very subtle. And... If you find that this brush is too big, you can always switch to a little smaller brush and you can get a little bit more detail. And then I'm going to grab my, I'm going to actually go ahead and grab this one, the Willer's Blender, so it can get in a little tighter spaces and just go in and Brighten up just a few edges. When you look at your picture, there's just a few cloud pieces that are clouds that have these kind of halos around them. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just kind of adding little halos. Let's add a little wispy clouds down low, just kind of scraping side to side. And I'm going to go right over the top of her hair so that I'm not stopping there. I don't want her to look like she's got a halo around her head. 
unless you want her to be an angel. Okay, so just adding a few highlights, and that's that's all we're gonna do there for the clouds, I think. I keep looking up trying to see the photograph of her, and she's not up there. Or the there we go. Thank you, hun. Do you need it over on your side? I was just keeping uh, track of how the connection's going. Okay. I'll let you know if I see anything. All right, let me clean that out. <laughs> All right. So that's still wet. So let's go ahead and work on her on her skin, get our first layer down on her arms and things. Arms and back. So I'm going to use the three colors that I generally like to use for skin tone are these three. It's the ultramarine yellow oxide and cadmium red medium. So I'm going to mix up the yellow oxide is kind of the base skin tone. And then you add just little bits of either of the other two colors to sort of alter, that's way too much of that. What? So you just kind of work back and forth until you kind of get that skin tone where you think it looks good. And then I'm gonna grab some of this unbleached titanium and pull it over here and add some of that color to it to see if it looks good. If it looks too orange, then add a little bit of the blue. If it looks too yellow, add a little bit of the red and the blue. You know, you just kind of have to go back and forth until you kind of get um, get a color that looks good. I might add a little bit of pink to this, just a little. There we go. I think that'll be good. And then let's start filling in her skin tone. You can tell as it dries too, if you've gotten a little too orange or a little too yellow. But our skin tones are made out of a lot of different, if you look at your skin tone, you've got a lot of areas that have a lot of red. You've got to have areas that have a lot of blue tint, like, you know, where the veins are showing. Um, from far away, it's not going to be as obvious as like, you know, close up of your hand, but you can see, you know, there'll be tanned areas and uh, more yellow areas. And well, this is Caucasian skin, obviously. So if you, um, you know, if you want to do a different skin tone. Uh, I do have the uh, Princess, um, sounds weird, Princess, I think it's Tatiana, right? Is that the right one? Um, where I did a dark skin tone and hers was kind of burnt umber and burnt sienna a lot. Those were the two main, a lot of yellow oxide for the highlights. Um, and then those are the only two that I've really done. I haven't done like um, Middle Eastern or Indian skin tones, but it's all kind of a matter of just kind of trying to find the underlying colors that you're seeing. Just remember they're not going to be Going to want to mute them, you know. You're not going to have like a like a straight pink on your, you know, skin tone, unless you're from Ireland, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> unless you're Jim Gaffigan, right? <laughs> Very pale. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, there's there's so many variations of skin tone. It's you know. So people in chat are saying congratulations on the 150,000 mark. Ah, thank you. Yeah, we noticed that last night. That was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Actually, 
Speaking of that, I have some paints that I want to give away today. Really? For the people watching live. Well, they just have to come by the house before 5 p.m., pick them up. <laughs> so they'll be all set. I thought it might be a fun thing to do for... Our... We have that many empty tubes of paint to give away? We do. Uh, somehow her shoulder looks wrong there. <laughs> I, think I, I think I covered up too much of it with the... Let me bring it up a little higher. I feel like this one's the right height here. Let me bring this up just a little bit right here. Oops, now I got orange on it, or the pink on there. We're just having all kinds of problems. Okay, that was drying. That's why that lifted off there. You saw what happened. I messed with it while that paint was drying, and it lifted. Okay, we'll just leave that. We'll fix it later. So, yeah, grab a... Grab some paint out of there. Out of that box? Yeah. Amsterdam sent us some samples of paint, and I've had them in my studio forever. I thought, well, it'd be a good excuse to give some away. I think we can only do it to the U.S. folks, though. No, it's the ones in the boxes. Oh, the boxes? Yeah. Oh, these. Yeah. We'll give away. <coughs> I think we have six of them. Yeah, we have six. Okay, so we're going to give away six of these <coughs> sets. These are the... Um, Let me zoom out a They're the standard series paints, so... Oh. So they, uh, they're they kind of like the Liquitex Basics, if you have those. They're not their professional line, but they're good. And I tested that set um, in one of my art chats recently on Facebook in my Thankful Art Group. So if you wanted to see the colors that you can make with that, I did a little test. So Snapthal Red Medium Ultramarine. As a yellow light, titanium and black. Oxide black. Titanium white and oxide black. So, yeah. So now we just need to come up with some questions for our giveaway. And um, we probably need to limit it to the U.S. just because I, I don't think I'm allowed to send um, paint overseas. I think that that's a thing. <coughs> some countries uh, don't allow certain, you know things so I don't want to have to have any issues with that so sorry guys they were watching overseas I know there's a lot of uh, viewers that are overseas but yeah we do we're going to limit this one to the US folks watching today maybe we can send them chocolate or something yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> alright I'm making some purples here I've got um the quinacridone magenta and the cadmium, or the, uh, actually I want to do some uh, ultramarine blue too. Um, light ultramarine blue here, I'm making kind of ultramarine blue and white. For some of my highlights, I have these pinks in my brush, so they're all kind of getting mixed up together. And I've got some of the purple and the quinacridone magenta. Uh, if you want it more, the more, the more um, magenta. If you want it closer to this photograph, you know, just add more of the quinacridone. Um, if you want it more of a softer lilac or lavender color, you can, you know, add more of the doxazine purple and the and the blue here. So it's just kind of up to you. I'm going to kind of use both myself. All right, so let's use some of these in the dark areas here. I'm going to try to remember where I did this dark areas here. I'm just kind of tapping along these lines where I wanted my shadow area just to kind of widen that out a little bit. I don't know where Mark went to. It just disappeared. Thought we were doing a giveaway. Maybe we're having issues with the internet again. I'm not sure. Maybe 
go. So I'm narrowing my lines as I get closer to the horizon line. And then as I get over here, these lines are getting wider here. Where'd you go? I had breathed in some chocolate. Uh-oh. And so I couldn't. Well, no, it wasn't choking. I just was coughing and I figured, well, <laughs> I need to step out and <laughs> <laughs> do this in the quiet. Yeah, go to the whole other side yeah, of the house go and to do the other it. Side of the house to choke. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, then. But thanks for asking. Okay. I just wondered, do you like we were talking and then you were gone? <laughs> we were I, didn't, I didn't know. And then I you didn't, like disappeared. So. I didn't know that you still needed me. Oh, well, I thought we were going to do a giveaway. <clears throat> oh, we are. So going right up next to her dress here, just to darken up. That area, I'm going to darken up right in here, too. I went over her hand a little bit. Don't worry, don't worry about that. Okay, I won't. Good. I'm kind of darkening up this bottom area, putting some dark areas in our lavender. No, I didn't get another Twix. We're all out. <laughs> I could have grabbed some peanut M&M's, though. So. Yep. So uh, we got to figure out how to give away six sets of paint, huh? Right. Right. Okay, so the first six people to donate $10 million? <laughs> well, I thought about maybe um, doing something with Instagram. Ooh. Do you, oh, you'd have to take my phone and do it. <laughs> Would you take a... Take a picture? Take a picture of, of the... So my, my Instagram is thankfulart, at thankfulart on Instagram. So if you haven't followed me already, go ahead and follow. Well, Mark's getting ready and we'll... What am I we'll taking a picture to, of with take a picture of this with this with your phone yeah with my phone okay just kind of these side by side post it on my instagram and we'll the first six that reply whoa the first six right sure i'm for that if i can figure out how to turn on your phone yeah <laughs> Sorry, guys. We should have thought of this before we started, I guess. Oh, there's a lot of glare there. Let's do it from this side. Oh, yeah. Is that good? Yeah, perfect. Okay. <coughs> filters? Sure no. Filters. Or whatever. I don't know. No, you don't need a filter. Okay, so what do we want to caption it? I don't know. Giveaway. 150,000 sub. Yeah, 15k, 150k sub giveaway. Okay. Post a comment. First six to win or something. So hopefully the people watching on their phones are not having to like leave <laughs> YouTube to go do that. First six USA right. commenters. Yeah. So, but you'll have to. Uh, Instagram makes it hard to contact people. So, I'll have to figure out. If you win, uh, send me a message on my email. My contact information is down in the video description. This is Angela Fine Art at gmail.com so that I make sure I have your address so I can send that to you. All right, so here's our flower fields, right? What? Okay, I'm not going to hit send until 
because we already have people commenting on other posts. What? Apparently, people giving us money too in super chat. Hold on. <laughs> All right, I'm mixing ultramarine blue and phthalo green here. A little bit of yellow, and I'm going to make my little bushes in the background here. I'm leaving a little bit, just tapping, so that I'm leaving a little bit of this, this sky showing through. That always makes it look a little bit more kind of realistic. Like that. Make it nice and dark right along that horizon line. So, do people have to follow you or just comment? Yeah, follow them. Yeah. Follow yeah, and definitely. comment? Yeah. They should already be following. That's a silly question. <laughs> <laughs> they asked in chat. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, that hopefully. Yeah. I mean, that would be nice. And then some people said not everybody has Instagram. Uh oh. That's not, is that not fair. Sorry. <laughs> We'll have to figure out how to give away something else, too. Okay. Well, I've got some of Cinnamon's brushes that I was going to give away. So, I can give those away. <laughs> no, she said I could. Yeah, okay. That's what she said. Right. Oh, me, really? To me for. Well, so, and this is for international, huh? Yeah, this could be international. So, we can do these for the folks in the Ooh. live show today, too. All right. So, the wow. things are for Instagram, folks. And then I've got all these brushes from Cinnamon. Give away. Ooh, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sets. Of Cinnamon Cooney. She's a good friend. Yarp, sure, She's Yarp, also Yarp, 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 Yarp. She's also one of my YouTube buddies. We do collaborations from time to time. So. And um, how will they win those? What? How will they win those? I don't know. I have to come up with something. We'll probably put these. And I'm going to say that if they, you can only win one. So if you win yeah. on Instagram, you can't win the right. brushes or one, vice two, versa. Three, four, five. We'll do six brush sets and six. Two, three, four, five. We got to get to painting the, the girl Sorry. here. I need it. Yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm just taking my time over there and nobody's painting. So let's see. So how many sets of brushes are we going to give away? I might Six? do five because there's there's some sets that are kind of small. So we'll do we'll do five. I okay. Think. So five sets of brushes. We'll yes. figure out how to win. Uh, do we want to do comments in the live show? Yeah. Let's do comments in the live show. Okay. So we'll, I can ask questions. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Whew, now I got to come up with well, man. That's too much work. <laughs> You're the one who said it. Not me. I know, I know. Well, all right. I'm mixing up some more of this pink here, so it's kind of more of a magenta pink. So let's add some of that in our fields here, just in a few places. I'm just gonna tap in a little bit of the pink color. I think I actually want to switch to my deer foot again. <laughs> or now let's do this one. This one actually worked pretty good on there. What? I just hit the the post on the Instagram. Uh -huh. It's like <laughs> 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 nice. <laughs> I like it. You guys are incredible. <laughs> you great. make our day. We love doing this. We love <laughs> yeah. sharing our times with you guys. This oh, is yeah. great. Needs a little bit of green here. Let's do some burnt umber or uh, ultramarine blue. With that, actually, do think I'm going to put a little bit of this brown in there just to kind of tone it down a little bit. And I've got my fan brush here, and I'm going to just kind of just a little bit of this green kind of down toward the bottom here. You can kind of see some of the. This may be a bad idea, but we'll see. So hopefully, it'll work. And I do want to do some on her dress, too, so I need to get her dress in there first before I do much more on this flowers here. So a little bit of green here and there. Okay, 
let's fill in her dress. And I get the 3 8 inch angle. And I'm going to go ahead and use white. And I'm going to mix up some out of ultramarine here. So you got our six winners on the Instagram? Well, yeah, but we're going to have to confirm that uh, they're U.S. Okay. people, so. You should be able to click on their profile and see. Probably. I'm still trying to come up with some questions for the brushes here. <laughs> So I made a blue gray with the ultramarine blue and the burnt umber here. So we'll use that along with this white to create our dress. Sorry we're a little scattered today, guys. Kind of got to a late start and we're doing all this extra stuff here. But it was kind of last minute. I've been talking about, thinking about doing a giveaway during one of the live shows for a while and I just... Now's a good time since it's a it's a special weekend. So I'm gonna kind of go along here where I'm seeing these ruffles and just put a little bit of this shadow kind of underneath where I'm seeing them. Just a little bit. They're pretty saw subtle, so it doesn't have to be super dark. Kind of dragging the tip of that brush to create some ruffles, and I'm going to grab the white here. What are you laughing at? Actually, somebody posted a question I thought about. What was and that? Then, and Mona wants to know can the moderators win? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'll have to write out the question before we ask it on air. It's a question for me? No. I'm putting some dark along the outside the edges of these where there's some shadow kind of under the arms. And this area back here is pretty gray just in general. So I'm going to go ahead and add more of that gray along with the white. Just kind of tapping them together to blend them lightly. They don't have to be super well blended. There's some details on her dress there that we're going to kind of tap in a little indication of. Let's just grab some more of the white. Yeah, that's good. That's good? Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll have to ask a question and then somebody's going to have to tell me the answer because <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> 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 I'll ask a question like, yeah, that's sure, that looks you like a good answer. You weren't even listening. Uh, and, and you're surprised? No, I'm, okay. not, I'm not surprised. That's hilarious. Let, let me think. I'm, I'm on the trail of some good questions, so. Okay. You just keep painting and I'll be right back. All right, do it. There's also some of this gray kind of coming down in folds, so I'm going to go ahead and do some sort of vertical folds too. Some lines between. I don't know if this is visible, very visible from this far away, but hopefully it's coming through. I'm going to zoom in. Mark doesn't know. Shh. Okay. All right. So 
I've got that gray and I'm just gonna lightly going over it. Um, it'll just kind of soften up that darkness. And we can put more, you know, firmer shadows in later. Deepen up the shadows later. And this dress is going over the top of the lavender, so um, these outside edges I'm not going to really worry too much about. I'll clean those up after we finish the lavender, but uh, we want to get this dress down so that we can put the lavender that's here at the bottom of the dress while we're doing the rest of it so that it all kind of goes together. So that's why we're doing it this way. Let's get some of our gray here. Put some of that. Kind of those vertical streaks. We'll make it look kind of creased. Makes the fabric look like it's folded in on itself. It's not going to look like much at first, so just kind of know that going in. It's going to be kind of uh, weird looking. We'll try to kind of clean it up and make it look better in our last couple layers. Just trying to add some texture and some things going on in this, these ruffles. And I didn't mention this at first, but um, I'm seeing some lines, some of my lines down here that I didn't erase. So before you start painting, um, you may want to just take a wet cloth and dab off your um, chalk lines that you did for, you know, to kind of um, outline your, or, you know, do your grid lines. Just go ahead and get rid of all your grid lines there, and that, that way it'll be easier to paint, especially this white part. have to fight covering up a bunch of stuff that you didn't want showing. Then going back in and just adding some darker creases to the dress. Keeping it very kind of flowy and it's all these kind of really soft ruffles that are happening, so. I'm kind of using a very light touch so that it's kind of just skimming a little bit on the dress. I think she's got a train on her dress because it looks like it's coming out farther, you know, than it should. She's got kind of a bustle on the back. Okay, so we'll let that set. Let's go ahead and start in on our highlights on our field. So let's put a little highlights on our far trees here. I'm going to grab some yellow oxide and some green, a little bit of the unbleached titanium. Just put in a little bit of highlight down there. And then Can we get questions about the picture? Okay. Is it real? 
I think they've, I think they've, it is real because there are several pictures from this photographer that, uh, you know, that in the same field mm -hmm. with and without the girl and things. Um, I think that they uh, edited the color. I think and that they made it, it brighter. Filtered it or something? Mm -hmm, filtered the okay. color. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they did. So the, what I'm doing is a little bit closer to probably reality. I'm still going to add a little bit more of the pink tones than they're just like them but you can if you want it a little bit closer to reality I would stick to your blue the ultramarine blue and don't don't really put a lot of this light pink in there okay so I'm just tapping sort of inner light areas still leaving a lot of that purple showing I'm just gonna build up different different layers here a lot of colors going on in these fields. Tap, tap, tap. I'm kind of swirling as I tap too. You can use you can use your Deerfoot stippler for this if you want. If or you know if you don't have one of these specialty brushes, you can use a you could use a you know really any stiff bristled brush would work. So they'll all have a little bit different look to them. You know, they might not all look exactly the same, but you'll get the same effect, similar effect. You The um, brushes like the hog bristle brushes like these can do a really good job and they're really cheap. You can get that kind of scruffy look. Just don't wet them down because they'll get soggy in water. And I'm not wetting down my deer foot stippler either for the same reason. Okay. As I get closer, I'm going to get more detailed with my tapping, maybe. things that you want to avoid when you're doing this kind of stippling it's real easy to repeat yourself and end up with re repeat patterns so one of the ways to avoid that is to um, move your brush be just be constantly moving it side to side and up and down and if you do see a pattern you can kind of go over the top of it um, Next to it, you can turn your brush a little bit so that you're constantly t twisting it um, to avoid having too much repetitiveness in your... in your flowers. Let me grab some more of that purple. These ones down here are kind of, you know, spiked sort of up and down. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of hold my brush and angle this way and sort of tap. So I'm getting kind of more vertical. Vertical flowers. And even a little bit of that green kind of poking through, you can see. Pretty. It's turned out pretty. I like it. Let's grab some of this light ultramarine blue if I can get it. There we go. It's mixed in with this purple too. So. Okay, I have five questions. Okay, go for it. So I have uh, authority to go ahead and ask them without oh, your approval oh, this first. Is the... Yeah. Oh, this is to win. Okay. To win. Hold on, I don't want it that bright yet. I'm gonna work up to the brightness. I'll bring them over there for you to read. Okay, you yeah, too. I've learned to get pre-screening, everybody. He's smart. I think I, I think of myself as a low maintenance person, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm so not. I I'm trying to reconcile myself to that 
as I get older. I just realize, just own it. I'm not an easy person to work with. I don't know. Oh, oh okay. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I didn't write the question down there. <laughs> said that before yeah we have and then this last one okay yeah those yeah. are good <laughs> all right all right these questions are gonna separate the tanks from the flowers <laughs> that's all i'm saying <laughs> i don't even know what that means do i want to know what that means i don't know either but okay <laughs> Okay, so this is to win a set of brushes. Yes. And I, I can confirm, I can read off the first six posts on Instagram. Do we want to show what they're winning? And so if they don't want them, they don't, they don't comment? <laughs> sure. I mean, okay, so here's the first set right there. Oh, it's the stencil out. set and the galaxy brush set. It's got little uh, stylus things, a little liner brush splatterer and a toothbrush for splattering and this is I'm giving this up because I've heard this toothbrush is amazing and I almost took it out of the set but I didn't so I'm being nice I'm giving this she sent these for me to you so I'm just telling you right now this is <laughs> that's before we got the just before we got the deal with Princeton to send they sent us all the brushes so um so then I was like um can I give them away <laughs> so all right, so this okay. is a set. This first is set. a set. <coughs> and we'll get the you commenter. Need to put a sticky note on them so you know who won. Okay. Oh, ow, oh, ow. Oh. I'm taking forever. I'm sorry. I apologize to those who are watching this replay because to learn how to they're paint. not they're not getting to what to win anything, and we're just taking up all this time doing this. So. Okay. So the first question. Right. To win those wonderful brushes. Yes. Is how do you make Angela's favorite gray? Ooh, I was just using it on a dress. What? Good question. Hey, thank you. And I wasn't paying attention, so I don't know. Do you have an answer? Well, I've got an answer. Hold on. We'll see if we get more answers coming in. Okay, so go ahead and give us the answer, honey. Burnt Umber in Ultramarine Blue. All right. And so that winner is Debbie Lawson. Woohoo, Debbie. Congrats. I like how this turned out. It's looking pretty. I think I'm gonna leave these ones that are farther away, kind of this darker pink, you know, just to kind of give it a little distance look. So I'll do this blue um, on this near one, but then I think I'm just gonna let the rest of these kind of fade out. Do a little bit, little tiny bit, just on the close parts. There we go. And I, you notice I'm not making these lines perfectly straight. That'll make them a little bit more realistic looking too because they're going to kind of, you know, there'll be little bumps and things in the ground. They're not going to be exactly perfectly straight. Oh, she's so pretty. <laughs> All right, let's put a little bit of this green up over her dress.
and so for the brushes we're answering here in chat <coughs> to clear up what just let everybody know that the questions are being answered here in chat live yes to win the brushes yes yes so you don't have to comment later unless you want to but We're just picking from our live audience just to kind of say thank you to those who stop by and watch with us live. Yeah. Today. Sorry if you were on vacation today, didn't get to watch with us live. Yeah. I understand. <laughs> so I'm using the, the uh, fan brush here and just kind of pulling up from either side. I know our, our picture that we did, she's only got the flowers kind of coming at an angle, but because we kind of changed the way the field was going. I figure I'm just going to kind of do them from both sides a little bit mm -hmm. since she's standing in the middle of a row. So we'll just have them kind of coming in. Okay. And that, and that was a question. Why did you choose rows rather than the clumpy? I just thought it'd be prettier. I don't know. But you can do the clumpy if you want to, too. I mean, really, what she would do is just do these dark areas this way, just like we did here in the rows, but just do them in like kind of V-shaped clumps and do them smaller as you get farther away. Okay, and what brush have you been using? That one um, is the, well, uh, let me see where it is, right here. Fish it out of the water. It's from the brush, guys. It's one of the Princeton uh, Willows Blender Velvet Touch line. It's, it's a filbert, but it's got stiff bristles, and it's, um, it's made for stippling. So... It's, you can blend with it. You can stipple with it. It does a lot of really neat things. But it does these really pretty soft blends. Um, so I just really like it. And I have one that's a quarter inch as well on my brush guys list. And I would use it today, but I didn't want to add another brush to today's thing. So I just, but it might be helpful for some of these that are a little bit farther away. So I think I'm going to do some little clumps within the lavender because the, even in these lavender, you know, they're, they're, they're individual f sets of flowers. So maybe do some little little sets of highlights that are a little bit Kind of like as if this is one bush and this is another bush. They're touching, but they're, there's still a little bit more highlights showing up on the tops of this section. Same thing over here. Are you going to do another giveaway one? Or are you just hold them? Oh, yeah, we'll do now. We'll do more. Okay. You want another one? Well, yeah, I thought you were going to do them all. Are you just well, kind of waiting to. and doing I'm going to spread them out. Spread them out? Okay. Mm -hmm. Keep people hostage uh, right. in here. Okay, I'm going to do some... Spikies. Our dress. Do some over this side too. Just kind of using the edge of that brush. If you don't have this, you could use a angle brush like this, or even a flat brush. Just something that's got a you know edge that you can get a soft you know line out of. You just want to. And this bottom edge, I'm gonna really kind of darken it up so that it's. Covered. Well, do you like that? Let's get some of that pink going on. Oops. Too much water. Mm 
leave a little bit of that white showing through, but down in here I want it pretty dark, so I'm going to get some more of that purple and just going to tap over that bottom edge a little bit on both sides so the bottom of that dress is hidden. There you go. I don't know if I like that. We'll just make it work. some of that darker in. Add some more detail to these ones that are just down low since we've got so much detail in that dress right there. We kind of need to have some detail in other areas along that front just so it doesn't look like she's the only place that's got these kind of flowers happening, right? some of the ultramarine blue here with the white get some really bright I'm trying to figure out how to uh Make sure it's fair for everybody. Mm -hmm. And so one suggestion was to take like the first five or ten correct answers and write mm -hmm. their names down and then draw from those. Okay. Because not everybody's Internet. speeds mm -hmm. are the same. Right. So I'm thinking how I could do that. Okay. It's turning into a lot of work for me. <laughs> I'm just letting you know how much I like you guys. <laughs> and I'm willing to go this extra mile for you. So we ready for question two? Sure. <clears throat> okay, so what we'll, kind of question is this one? So we will uh I will take the first um uh, first seven correct answers. Mm -hmm. Seven. And then from those names we will draw. So I'm not gonna be able to Get Think the there's name be that many, right away. That many right answers? Of course there will be. Okay. These are super fans. All right. You have no faith in your I fans. Don't think, well, I didn't know the answer to this, so that's why I'm wondering if they will, because I didn't even know. I would have to go and looked it up. 
Well, hopefully we don't see a large drop off of viewers. Right. I know. <laughs> Okay, here we go, everybody. The first correct seven answers. And the question is, which one of Angela's videos has the most views? Oh, that one. Okay, I do know that one. Yeah, you know that one. The hint is it's over a million. Right. And it's one of the first ones I ever did. <laughs> wow. So far, there is no right answers. Ooh. Well, I'm going to I'm going to give maybe one person a right. Answer. Holy moly. Chat is just <laughs> What did they say? Well, we've got uh, Triple Pumpkin, Poppy, Red Poppy, Tiger. I got one that's uh, pretty close. Yeah, the problem is with that one is that I've got other ones that are named similar things. So... They're going to have to be pretty specific about the title. Well, I'm going to get it pretty close. Okay. I'm going to have some leeway I on I'm it. I'm not even working on this side. I need to, I'm going to get this whole side done and then I <laughs> to still work on this side. Okay, here we go. So really, you're seeing this though, hopefully, even though we're talking about other things. I'm just tapping... leaving some of the background showing, trying to get these layers in here. And as I get in down toward the bottom here, I'm getting a little bit more specific with my brush strokes. So you're seeing these individual little dots. As they get farther away, they're kind of clumping together. You're not seeing as much individual detail. So just keep that in mind. You don't want to be doing little spiky things way, way up in the distance because you're just not, it's not going to make sense. They're all going to clump together. You're not going to see the detail unless you're real close to it. some answers. Uh-huh. I told you, I didn't know that they, that one's a tough one. I've got to make sure I get all the names here. Okay. What do you think it is? I know what it is. Oh, okay. That's right, you looked it up first, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Okay, so... I have... Sorry, I read slow, everybody. I want to make sure I get it right. looking a little bit better. Let's grab some of this light blue, the little light ultramarine. Add that to some of this over here.
get a lot of dead space, a lot of dead sound while you're thinking. Yep. Now you see how hard it is to to think and talk at the same time. Well, I'm reading. Okay. Bushes, just to kind of round them off a little bit. Right there, right over here. Just these close ones. So this is that last, the kind of like really final, bright. Kind of slowly building up to this bright color and you don't want to do too much with this bright color otherwise it'll kind of won't have the same impact it'll just lighten up the whole the whole thing you know your whole field will the values you want to leave your dark values and your light values and that what that's what will give it that kind of balanced effect okay I think I like that. Sorry. I got a new, uh, actually bought yoga knee pads <laughs> for the studio. <laughs> so we'll see if they work. <laughs> but they're like these foam wedges that, and so instead of my little wood thing there, they'll be angled just a little bit more and they'll be like these foam wedges underneath here. So I should get them for next week's. Okay, so Video. I got to see if what you would allow. Would you allow drippy flowers? Mm, no, uh, drippy flowers. I forget exactly how they said it first time. Hold on. Uh, I would allow Q-tip flowers. Okay, we got the flower splatter one. Yep, that's okay. that's good. All right. Then we had, what was the other close one? Using the tip of the brush, just pointing down this way. This is the angle brush, three eighths inch. We had wild flowers. Then we had floral landscape. Yeah, that's what it's which called. Which is the one that is called. So Rebecca Cook was the first one to say that, but so, but she's in the running. Okay. So we've got our field done. Now we've got to go back to the girl here and add some detail on her body and her hair. Here, I'm actually going to add, use this unbleached titanium and some burnt umber to put in the color underneath her hair because it is, let's add a little bit of yellow oxide too to make it a little bit more golden. Yellow oxide, a little bit of burnt umber. There we go. A darkish color. I don't want it super dark because we don't want to have to fight this color to, you know, get our blonde on here. But I do want some of this darker color, so I'm just going to kind of streak it on in the direction that that hair is growing. That way I can leave a little bit of the lighter color, not a little space for the lighter color to go. But make sure that you get it in kind of all these areas where it's going to be darkest around the sides of the head and the crown. Okay, there we go. Now, would you accept cotton swab painting? Mm hmm. Okay. All right, so now I got to pick from these seven people. Okay. I'll be right back. Do it. Better hurry up because you're going to run out of time here. I'm not that far from being finished. So. Sure. Okay. You haven't said almost finished, so we haven't hit the 30 minute mark yet. Okay. All 
right, so a little bit of um, ultramarine blue, a little bit of burnt or a burnt umber, just to darken it up, and yellow oxide here. This will be our shadow color for her arm. It's very similar to the hair color. So we're going to shadow along the side of her dress here. And right up underneath where it kind of hits her bodice. I'm just going to set it down and pull up some color here. And I'm going to go farther out than I need to with this because we'll We'll use a lighter color to kind of blend over it. There's a shoulder blade right here. So which brushes are they going to win? Did we say yeah, this was the number second, the second one? Well, we didn't say we ahead didn't of time. Brushes, no. um, we'll do these two together. Okay. Is too. All right. Rebecca Cook. Rebecca Cook. There you go. <laughs> yes, okay, so what's the next brush set? The Explorer brush set. All right. Oops, sorry, I wasn't showing the tips there. It's got a little one down. Here, a little bitty one, and then some of the mostly flats, all flats. All right, we're getting there. Okay, the next question is, which of Angela's videos is the longest of the published and the YouTube public realm? Not Patreon. Not Patreon, so just here in the public YouTube, which is her longest video? I don't know that I know that. This is unbleached titanium here. So I'm going to use this to kind of add my highlights on the skin tone. It's a really good highlight color for skin tone because I already got that yellowish tint to it. I don't have to add anything else. It's just already really good color. I'm going to go along the outside of the arm, clean up that edge that where any of that purple color went over it, and kind of tap over that shadow area just a little bit. Do you want to zoom in there, hon? Mm -hmm. A little highlight right at the back of the elbow there. I'm going to even grab a little bit of white. Go even brighter right along this outside edge, just a little bit. Okay, the correct answer was the tiger. Nice. At three hours and 35 minutes. I still can't believe that. Wow. <laughs> the kiss was second at three hours and 20 minutes. And our winner is Skirker. Nice. I'm using, I'm taking the first seven people in order, and then there's a random generator online that I'm using, and it just picks a number for me. So that's how I'm doing it. Nice. So we had seven people that guessed her tiger. Oh, yeah, a lot more. Okay, which ones were the ones this? Yep. Okay. All right, the next set, portrait set, it's got filberts and a liner. 
I show the top? I probably did there. Thank you to Cinnamon for providing these brushes too. Mm -hmm. This is really sweet. Right. And we had one person who guessed correctly in the top seven, but they had already won, so they were oh. not included in the count. Well, they get bonus points. They get bonus points. Maybe we'll send them some paints too. <laughs> Just kind of softening up those shadows that I put there. That shoulder blade looks kind of funky, but she does have a really sharp shoulder blade there. So it's just painting what we're seeing there. Pretty dark. And I'm going to get some burnt umber here. Go in really dark with that crease right here. I'm wiping that off because I got too wide of a line there. Just kind of a clean brush there, kind of clean up that line. Really dark. Right there, and then I'm going to grab the unbleached titanium and just kind of clean up that. there. There we go. I think that that's a little high. I think it went a little high. It's amazing how just the subtlest little differences will make, you know, make the arm look from scarecrow to, you know, normal. So I'm going to bring that crease down just a little bit. I think it was a little too high. There we go. That's a little bit better. I still think that this is not quite right. So I'm going to use a little bit smaller brush so I can get a little bit better detail here. I'm going to use a little bit of my purple with some white. A little bit of the blue in there maybe. And I'm just going to round that out. I'm going to dab it kind of a dark area behind it, so I'll get a little bit of a darker color. There we go. That's better. A little bit more natural. And then I can use this to kind of clean up the edges there if I need to. And let's go ahead and use this with that burnt umber. This is my number one round, and I'm going to use it in here to put in my dark shadow. It's on the back side of her arm right here, and right up underneath her bodice, where the bodice meets the back, there's a nice dark shadow right there. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to put some of this in her hair as well, just a little bit of this dark burnt umber. It's kind of thinned down a little bit with some water here, so it's not super as dark as we just put in. And then let's put in some of our details on the dress. I'm going to grab some of the ultramarine blue. Uh, it looks like gold, but I'm seeing some blue too, so I'm going to start with that, add some white to it, dab in some just some random it's kind of like sequins and things on the back of her dress there and then let's grab some burnt umber and yellow oxide and there's some Kind of gold details looks like. So we'll start with dark and then we'll lay in some highlight colors over the top. Grab some white and some of the yellow oxide and just dab a little bit of that. Ready for Bring it down a little bit on her back. 
Are you ready for the next question? Yeah. Do it. All right. Here we go. Get ready, everybody. <laughs> okay. I'm ready. Uh, I one, hope I know it. In Sorry. one. <laughs> <laughs> but you got a comment. Okay. <laughs> oh, darn it. Uh, in one of the videos that Angela did, I said the hardest part about painting one of these is catching them. What is it? I know. I know this one. Okay. Using white and a little bit of that unbleached titanium. A little bit more of the unbleached titanium there. Can write answers. Yeah. Good. All right, so I think that's pretty much all I'm going to do with her skin tone. We didn't do a huge amount of detail on our other girl either, so I might do a little bit more. Let me see. I might do a little bit shadowing. She's got a lighter skin tone though than the than the dark-haired girl, so. I have to do quite as much shadowing, but I think I will add a little bit more of the dark right here, a little bit on her elbow there, a little bit on the inside of her elbow here. And then let's use our liner brush to start putting in our hair. So I'm going to start with, let's go ahead and with white. need to add a lot of white water to it. Got a little bit of the unbleached titanium. I'm going to grab yellow oxide, or I'm sorry, cadmium yellow. It's going to be way too yellow, so I'm going to add some of the yellow oxide to tone it down. So that'll be kind of our blonde gold color. I'm going to add a little touch of the burnt umber. That'll kind of neutralize it a little bit, make it a little bit more natural, ashy blonde. And then grab a lot of this white. Okay, so the correct answer was rooster. I knew that. It was an epic moment. It was a moment where I laughed so hard I couldn't even hardly paint anymore. <laughs> All right, so if this is kind of, this has got a little bit more of the yellow in it. Uh, this is the kind of the medium color here. I'm going to start with that, and we'll work our way to the lighter color. So I'm going to, actually don't like that brush. It's too floppy, so I'm going to grab a different brush here. I'm going to grab the 3 aught. see if I can get better lines with that. And while she does that, congratulations to SheCat. Make sure you... Email me your addresses, everybody who's winning, please. Because I will not be able to find you later. So You can't just put SheCat on an envelope and then put it in the mail? Right. It's not like sending it to Santa, I guess. Right. Okay. <clears throat> so this is that color. I've added a little bit more yellow oxide to it. But that's the lighter color here that we've mixed with the got yellow oxide, a little bit of burnt umber, and the uh, white. So just adding on top of that darker color that we put in. And if you're not seeing it, you may have to add some more of the darker blonde. It, you know, it kind of you can't get contrast if you don't start out with the dark, you know, enough color. So just keep that in mind. Even though she's blonde, she's got light colored hair, she's still going to have dark areas in this hair. So I'm going to bring it down over the top here. Grab some of this darker color. And bring it in.
Okay, and then this is going right over the top of her shoulder here. It's actually a dark area we didn't do, so we're gonna do that. And then there's some that's coming off over here. The wind blow in this direction. is these yellows. I'm just adding a little bit of that burnt umber to it to darken it up. I'm gonna put some of this along that edge right here. I'm gonna pull that hair in this direction. have a question about mixing paint here. Okay. It says, how would you mix for the lightest blonde as in the photo? I am right now. I'm getting there. Okay. We, we haven't you gotten figure. to the whitest part yet, okay. but we're, we'll, we'll get there. This is where you start with, though. Because even though she's super blonde, there's still really dark areas. So we'll add this part very last and we'll, it'll make that white blonde look. But this area is really pretty dark. So that's what we're starting with, and then we'll work our way up to the really bright areas at the very end. And the brush that you're using? This is the 3 out. 3, three out. out. Used your word that you liked. I know. <laughs> I forget I was going to make a brush, wasn't I? Or something. I can't remember what you were saying we were going to do. Yeah, then, yeah. Anyways, so... We're down to our last question. Okay. And for this one here, I'll take the top 15 to give more people a Ooh. chance. Well, but the thing is, the first three that answer, they're, then everybody else knows the right answer. Then uh, That wasn't the case. Okay, good. And some of these. Okay, good. Man, people want an easy question. We're, we're not throwing meatballs here. <laughs> you, you're going to have to... They want you know, easy questions. You're going to have to have gone and you know taken a, a college-level course on Angela Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> God Be help you. Become a historian. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's don't, right. Please don't. <laughs> I, I was going to make the almond brush, but that's not the question. Because you were talking about the filbert brush. And oh, so that's I'm going right. to make the almond brush. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's a question for another day. Or an answer for another day, I should say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Adding a little bit of highlight to her elbow there. There and there. the white but I still have just a tiny bit of that yellow in there the tiniest bit so I want it really bright now try to keep these as thin as I can get them with this brush which is not very thin <laughs> people are already giving me answers I haven't answer, asked a question yet <laughs> 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 but I, I kind of already know <laughs> I, I kind of want to give Susan something because she bailed me out with the almond brush <laughs> I might just have to do something out of my pocket, maybe maybe <laughs> some chocolate or something. I don't know. <laughs> just kinda in that giving mood today. Yeah, I you don't are. know why. Well, because everybody has you're, been you're always welcome to give me stuff. You know how much I like it. Everybody has been very generous towards us. And uh, you know, it's been an incredible ride. It has been. And so we do appreciate everybody. All right. The final question. The top 15 people <laughs> are on the board. No. <laughs> top 15 answers on the board. 
Here's but, your question. But there's only one. And the question is, where'd, where'd, <laughs> could have used my words, where did Angela and I meet for the first time? Ooh. Are you talking city or place? Actual place. Place. Hint, we both worked there. So we're talking about a workplace. Here's those white highlights that'll make it look a little bit brighter. Bring all those blonde highlights really out into focus. ones that are coming off the sides I'm kind of curving to go along with the has anybody answered it right yet was that too difficult what <laughs> somebody put ornaments <laughs> <laughs> I think they should win just for that just for that <laughs> <laughs> just for that <laughs> it's awesome that's awesome. <laughs> so I was just adding some extra little feathery brush strokes out here. Trying to keep them thin so that they don't look too weird. way too so I'm gonna kind of do some flippy flippy ones right there going over her arm and if you get one that's kind of thick what you can do is kind of go over it with a thinner line it'll split the hair and make it look like two or three or more so it's a way of kind of you know if you get a big clumpy line there you kind of do one more layer on her dress with the bright white. I'm going to get some fresh white so I have a nice bright white to use. We'll clean up the edges and I'm going to use the angle brush again if I can find it. There it is. My quarter inch angle. I actually used all of our brushes today. Amazing. That hardly ever happens. And all of the paints? Uh, I didn't use the burnt sienna. Oh, almost perfect. Yeah, I thought I'd use it on their hair, but then I just decided not to, so sorry about that. Um, I'm going to let that dry, though, and I'm going to go ahead and glaze her hair a little bit. So I've got one more thing to do on her hair. But I'm going to grab the white with this angle brush. I'm going to put in some streaks down from the bodice and go clean up any edges that look 
funky. I'm going to just go ahead and go over her hand right there. And it is kind of a gauzy fabric, so you can kind of let it, let that purple show through. It's fine. It can kind of, you know, these, these outer edges don't have to be perfectly solid. They can have kind of a see-through quality. And I'm just going to go right above, right along these dark edges and just kind of add a little highlight along the top of them. It'll kind of help enforce, em emphasize the, was that a bad question to ask? It, it, it was in prison, everybody. <laughs> That's awesome. No, we have a winner. We had a lot of a lot of correct answers out there. Good. And since you remember it so well, what was it, honey? McDonald's. McDonald's. And Chastity Dufford is our winner. Phew. Congratulations. And somebody said that. And there's another future question. Which painting did Angela use all of her brushes in? <laughs> <laughs> That's not right. We, we still don't have one for which one did she use all her paints in, though. I, I, ha, I usually use all my paints. It's just the brushes that I don't always use all of them. It's, you know, it's hard when you're guessing what, it, what you're going to need, so. I do my best. What? People are now saying, this one, this one, today. They're trying to win something again. <laughs> <clears throat> and we didn't show them what they were going to win there. Oh, okay. Hold think. on a second. I'll get it back for you. That was the beginner pink set. The flat brush and a round brush. So, nice. thank you to Cinnamon. Thank you to Amsterdam Paints for giving us those paint samples. Hope you enjoy those who won on Instagram here and in chat. It's fun. Hopefully, we'll get to do this again soon. I love doing giveaways. It's fun to do them around the kind of milestone sort of thank those who've helped us get there all right brighter just bright highlights you can see as long as we have dark enough you know underneath if you need to you can go back in and kind of dirty it dirty up your white layer if you need to to kind of make this pop out a little bit more but Going right above that dark area, we'll just kind of push that layer. It'll push the shadows down and pull the highlights areas forward, make them look more raised up. Just kind of make her dress that much more roughly. Looking. So I. I can give the names of the people on uh, Instagram, Who but won? we have we haven't confirmed their location, or I haven't figured it out. So I don't know if you want me to do that or not. Yeah, sure. Okay. Okay. Well, the first six comments I see are from Kathy Vardner. One, two, three. She did six comments. No. Oh. You said the first six people, so she's the first of the six. I see. Okay. Good. I that makes more sense. <laughs> and I, I Sorry. <laughs> forgive me for uh, butchering everybody's names here. Then we got Hold Deer Line. Maybe. Hopefully that's how you say their name. Hold on. We got Super Chat coming in. I got to make note of it real quick. I'm going to use the yellow oxide and burnt umber here and clean my brush off and just. And this is really watery and I'm going to just go over some of the hair here and the, 
And the other commenters real quick were Mary Newborg, Elfspawn13, Glass Genie 2. Elfspawn? Elf's Mom. Elf's Mom. 13. 13. Glass Genie. So let's see, that's one, two, three, four, five. The sixth one was TV8264. Okay. Yeah, so it will be impossible for me to figure out who those are unless they would <laughs> message me because there's no names, so. easy as Facebook to track people down on Instagram. But we'll get there. Oh, yeah. And we have to confirm that everybody has U.S. addresses that we can ship the paints to right. since they're chemicals. Exactly. All right. So just going through here and adding one last layer of the bright white highlights. <coughs> And I might add just a little bit of I'm trying to see what color I'm seeing there over here. We'll try a little bit of this yellow. It might be too bright. We'll see. No, that's not bad. Cadmium yellow and white here. Just trying to get those bright highlights built up thin enough so they were still seeing other colors through. That's the trick. It's just to not do too much, too thick lines too quickly with this hair because you don't want to end up with big solid fat lines. I think that's good. All right, go ahead and zoom out there, honey. We'll see what, we'll, what we look like. There we go. So there's our girl in lavender, and there's our girl in the puppy field, side by side. Not bad. I feel like her head looks like a little bit lower than it should be. I think it's okay. She's just a little bit bigger. Okay, which which yellow did you use there? I used a little tiny touch of cadmium yellow with white, just for a couple of little in a little couple of little places, but not not a lot. So, but there she is. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Ooh, got some super chats. All right. Oh, I can do that. I'll sign it. It's been a day of generosity on both ends. Really? So we had four super chats. First one from Sandy. And she says, while working on my computer, Angela's face popped up. I had to finish my work, but <laughs> kept glancing at Angela's as if she was chocolate cake. And I couldn't have it until I cleaned up my plate. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and that's then great. we'd have a Nesa. Oberlin, and she says, congratulations to a super team, Angela and Mark. Thank you so thank much, you, guys. Nathan. And then we had Susan, LS08. There was no special message, but thank you so much, Susan. And then we had Denise, Richard, and she says, hi, Mark and Angela. If I ever win, send me Slim Jims, please. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Love you always. Slim Jims. <laughs> yeah. You got it. Here, go ahead and take off the side there. I'll see if we can get these side by side to show up. I'm gonna try. There. there we go. So there's our girls. There's our runaway brides side by side. Hopefully they find true love. 
Thanks for watching, guys. So did we tell them about Traceables and all that stuff? Uh, I think I mentioned it. The Traceable for this is available on Patreon.com slash Angela Fine Art. And uh, also the grid. Yeah, so I mentioned it at the beginning when I was okay. talking about the grid. And so um, the links to all the social media down below. Yep, links to all that. And we'll see you on Tuesday night. We're going to have... Um, Moonlight Butterflies. It'll be kind of Impressionist style. It won't, uh, I think it'll be fun, easy project. And then uh, next Saturday, we'll be doing the desert. Right? I think that's the right one. The desert that well, it came in second to the lion painting on, in our Patreon poll. So we'll be doing that next week. So hope you guys will join us for those. And give it a thumbs up and like, subscribe to the channel, all that good stuff. Uh, if you want to get notifications of new videos, you can uh, click the bell and it'll send you emails, hopefully, some, when it works. <laughs> Sandy just did another super chat. Oh. Says, get a Big Mac. Get a Big Mac. <laughs> All right. <laughs> just, for, just for love's sake. <laughs> love Big Macs bringing people together. <laughs> the McDLT was a thing back then. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be 33 years. Since next first date. Next Friday of her first date. Yep. So anyway, sorry everybody. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.